I'm Malin, and no, I'm not in a time capsule, but currently in ESA's Space Data Preservation Archive, a secure facility located deep within the agency's Center for Earth Observation in Frascati, Italy. Did you know that this archive stores heritage data dating back to the 1970s? Yup, that's also when disco music first became a real hit. And if you're wondering what this means, these are data from past Earth observation missions no longer operating in space, but which have left us with fundamental data records of our planet. This way, we can preserve the past to understand the present so that we can better shape our future. These data are stored in climate-controlled rooms, hence the background noise of air conditioning that we are hearing. But let's ask Mirko Albani why we really need both the oldest and newest Earth observation data. Newest data are fundamental as they provide fresh information on the status of our planet, the status of our uh, land, our oceans, uh, the quality of the air that we breathe. Uh, past data, on the other hand, are fundamental when we want to monitor change and trends of the current situation with respect to the past. And this is happening, for example, in the cases of glaciers and uh, their melting, in the case of forestry, when we want to monitor the impact of deforestation in the Amazon forest, for example, or the sea level rise. So, fresh data provides information on the status of the planet today. Past data are fundamental to monitor change, for example, climate change. But what kind of data are we talking about? The data that we store in our archives comes from different satellites and different uh, instruments. ESA started acquiring data in the mid-70s from third-party satellite data, so data from other uh, agencies like NASA, for example. At that time, the data were archived in this kind of technology. This is uh, uh, called HDDT, and it weighs 10 kilos and can host 10 gigabytes of data. And it was the unique technology at that time able to store Earth observation data. Then the data were archived on shelves, like books in a library, and when a user wanted to get access to this, we were transcribing the data from these tapes to this kind of media, which can, could be read at, using this kind of technology. So instruments that were very uh, expensive, so only the research centers and universities at that time could access this, uh, this data. Um, I will explain later what uh, this is. Uh, in the years then, we tried to move to uh, other technologies, lighter, cheaper, and with more capacity. So we explored this uh, technology, which is optical disc, so it's a big DVD, and we were storing data also on these kind of uh, technologies. And we also moved to other kind of technology in the years, when the agency started also to launch its own Earth observation satellite with ERS-1 that was launched in 1991, followed by ERS-2 in 1995, and with Earth Explorers and the current Copernicus Sentinels. Other media that we were using at the time were this media called D1, they were coming from the movie industry, but also we started to have something lighter for the users, like these exabyte tapes, so we did not have any more to deliver the big pizzas to them, and this could be read using these uh, simpler um, devices that were also much cheaper, so accessible also to more, to more users. We also started to have uh, the first uh, robotic archives, so no need anymore to have shelves and books, as the data were stored on smaller tapes into this kind of robotics, which could be used to automatically extract the data without the need of a manual intervention from an operator. Then we continued to use uh, other technology and we arrived to the current years uh, when we started to have uh, this kind of uh, uh, boards, acquisition boards, that were allowing to uh, archive the data directly on computers, so on our disks, so it was possible from the satellite immediately to download the data, store the data on computers, transcribe the data on DVDs and deliver the data on DVDs to the users or directly online. Today, all the data from our satellites are systematically downloaded, processed, archived, and made accessible to users online, so the user can access the data, download the data, but also uh, um, extract information through exploitation platforms and tools, which are made available by the agency, to deliver and extract directly the information. And it's worth to remind that all the data from the agency are completely open and free for all users. But why is it so important to keep this place alive and functional?
Keeping an archive alive is fundamental as this data needs to be continuously accessed for many different kinds of applications like climate change, for example. This means uh, different things. First of all, we need to continuously populate the archive with fresh data from newer missions. Second, we need to improve the data that are already in the archive to improve their quality and build a time series of aligned data with the ones coming from the newer missions, which have a much better technology. That's why we need to work and improve the old data. Third, we need also to populate the archive with new old data as still we have a lot of data which are stored on uh, heritage media uh, that need to be extracted as they are on this media as a unique copy and uh, there are continuous activities now at the agency to complete the transcription of all the media that we have plus also the transcription of media coming from other agencies and other organizations asking for our support mirka what was this thing you were talking about well, this is basically an oven, and you will ask, what do you do with an oven in this kind of environment? Well, you remember that I mentioned that we were archiving data on this kind of media. We often call this media pizza, and these media were supposed to last forever. In reality, we discovered that on the uh, film, there were some cracks appearing after some years, so it was not possible anymore to read the, the media and extract the data. So one guy from Italy, and we are very used to, to prepare pizza in Italy, said, why don't we try to bake the pizza in an oven and see if it works for the, for the reading. And actually it worked. So the idea was to bake these pizzas for 12 hours or more, depending on the brand, into the oven. And then in this way, the cracks were melting and it was possible to extract the tape from the oven, read it again in the readers and extract all the data. And actually this approach worked very well because we have transcribed more than 40,000 tapes with a 100 success rate and we have extracted all the data that were stored therein and recovered them for our scientific users. The 1970s brought us two major space-related events, Star Wars and the European Space Agency. Since then, ESA have been collecting data from many satellites over land, oceans and the atmosphere. So satellite data are key contributors to climate research, providing long-term information that is currently used in many climate models. For this reason, we must keep all of the heritage data accessible. If you want to discover more about ESA's Heritage Missions program, check out our Earth Online website.